Hi everybody, thanks for stopping out at Pete's Garage. I have about 15 minutes to tell you everything I can about cylinder heads. Now, most cast aluminum parts that are cast using the lost foam technology start out like this. This right here is a cylinder head. It doesn't look like a cylinder head because it's not made out of aluminum, but is a precision model of exactly what a casting of a cylinder head would look like when it comes out of the mold. This is how most, or actually all, foam, lost foam technology or lost foam cast parts, this is how they start their life, and this, like I said, is a cylinder head. And this is what it is. This part, this cylinder head, as you can see, if you look, you see the parting lines here. These are glue lines right here. So this part is made in one, two, three, four, five different pieces. Okay, those glue lines are important to remember because I'm going to talk about those later and the different pieces. The reason it's made in different parts like this and glued together is because there are passageways inside of the cylinder head that are extremely uh, uh, difficult and it would be impossible to cast using traditional casting methods. So they developed this lost foam technology which enables them to make very complex parts with, with intricate passageways on the inside. Now, this is how this works. The part is made out of this foam, and this is a very precision foam uh, used for this method, and it's a very uh, specific density for the beads, and I won't go into that. But you can see that the, the top of the cylinder head the uh, exhaust side of the cylinder head, the face where the valves go, and uh, the intake side, everything is exactly as it would be as if you were to look at a finished machined cylinder head. And again, this would be the raw casting. This is placed in the mold, and it is packed thoroughly with an extremely fine casting sand. Every one of these openings here, every one of these little voids, gets filled with a, a very fine sand. It's packed in there, and then it's packed around with a regular kind of casting sand and a sprue or a hole is left to go inside to the foam. Then what happens is when the molten aluminum is poured into the mold and it reaches the foam, the foam immediately vaporizes, leaves a void inside of the sand and the aluminum takes its place. That's why it's called lost foam. It's lost foam because when it, the molten aluminum hits it, it, eva uh, it vaporizes and it becomes lost leaves a void, and what you have out of a mold is a finished cylinder head. Now if I were to take, when this comes out of a mold, and if I had a finished cylinder head here, if I were to take the, the, the aluminum cylinder head and cut it on a, with a saw, cut it and section out a piece of the cylinder head right here, I would end up with something that looks exactly like this. As a matter of fact, I'd end up with exactly this. This is what the aluminum cylinder head looks like after it comes out of the mold. And you can see, if, if, if I can, I will try and get here as close as I can so you can see. You can actually see the foam beads cast right into the aluminum. It looks like it's made out of foam. That's why cast parts that look like foam have that uh, contour to them or that, that sort of um, texture is because it was produced using the lost foam te uh, technique. So here is a, a cutaway a section of a cylinder head and I'm going to use this to explain how a cylinder head works and what the valves do and how the different oil passages work and, and how the coolant makes it through its way through its cylinder head. Here is a close-up of the cross-section cylinder head. This would be the intake side, this would be the exhaust side, this is a spark plug right in the middle. If I turn it you can see here's the valves right here. And if you remember, I was talking about the precision sand and the sand, very fine sand. You can see inside here where this water jacket is, there's a very fine sand. And still inside the water jacket, it needs to be flushed out. But this is not a finished cylinder head. So let's talk about the how fuel gets inside the combustion chamber first. When the fuel injector is put inside the engine here, and, the, and it would be put in right like this, and it sits exactly right here. This black O-ring is the only thing that seals the fuel injector inside the engine. You only need one O-ring, and it's a very light O-ring. It's not, not that uh, hefty. And if you get a cut in here, you'll get uh, a, a lot extra air in your engine. It'll engine will run, will run lean. The reason you don't need a hefty seal here is because as air comes in here through the intake manifold, and this fuel comes out of the injector sprayed as a mist. The fuel mixes right here and this is a vacuum. So air is being sucked in through here 
pa past the injector. So this O-ring seals air from being sucked in. Now, as air comes in here, air comes in through the intake plenum, the fuel injector sprays a mist of gasoline right here, and they both come in, they combine right here, and then they enter in through the bottom here into the intake valve. You can see the intake valve on the bottom. The exhaust looks very simple. You have the piston down here, the fuel air burnt, so you have your hot emission gases comes up exits right through this port right here. Here's the exhaust valve right here and it comes out through this port right here. And the rest of this is coolant passageways. This is how coolant gets through the cylinder head to cool down the cylinder head as it's running. You can see the coolant passage here continues down and it comes out the bottom of the casting. This would go through the block and continue in through the water pump and cool down the rest of the engine. So that's the cross section of the basic parts of the uh, inside of the cylinder head. The top part, like I said, you have the, the two holes here. These would be for the schlaws or the lifters, mini, mini lifters if you want to call them that. There's one, one on each side for the intake and exhaust. These are where the valve springs will sit. Bolt holes for the cylinder head uh, and you can see the spark plug, how the spark plug sits inside like that. So if you're looking down at the top of the engine, you'd see both spark plugs. This happens to be a cross section between two cylinders, which is why you see two half cylinders. If you remember, when I had the foam part in my hand and I said it's just a, uh, the foam part is the mold for the cylinder head, and I said remember those parting lines where the glue is. If I come in here and look real close, you can see here's a parting line right here. And up here there's a parting line right in here, which is hard to see, but you, there's a parting line right there. There's a parting line right down here. There's a parting line right in here. So if you were to look at this and count, we have the pieces of the foam. One is down here, second part is right here, third part right here, fourth part is right through the middle, and the fifth part is on top. So you can see the actual parting lines are where the foam was glued together because it's cast right into the aluminum. So that's how the lost foam method works when you uh, cast aluminum parts or any kind of part and that's why that method is used because you can see how complex some of these passages are and that you wouldn't be able to do this with a regular casting. So that's why that method was developed and that's why they use that to make cylinder heads because the insides are so complex. Okay, now I'll talk about the valve assembly and what holds the valves together and what the main components are. First of all, you notice they're different sizes. The intake valve is larger than the exhaust valve, always. The intake valve is always the largest of the two because the intake is working under vacuum and it needs as much volume as possible or largest valve as possible to get as much air and fuel in as possible and this is how it works that's the valve closed that's the valve open closed open same thing with the exhaust now the exhaust valves are working under pressure the, the hot spent exhaust fumes are under pressure in the cylinder trying to be forced out so you don't need a big valve this is under pressure so when the exhaust valve opens up, all the hot gases come out and are forced out to the exhaust. Okay, So intake valve is always bigger than the exhaust valve. These are the other major components of the valve assembly. Uh, these are the schlaws. I call them mini lifters. It's really not a lifter. It's where the roller follower rests on. This actually rests on the schlaw and it pushes to open the valve because the cam sits on top here and pushes it down. So we have the schla. We have the valve guide. The valve guide is what sits inside. The valve guides are right inside here. And those are precision machined for concentricity. The valve guide has to be machined so that this valve is exactly in the center of the opening of the valve opening or the valve seat. So we have our valve guides. It comes through our valve seal. The valve stem seal this is an umbrella type seal. The valve stem seal is what keeps the oil from leaking down the top of the stem. And that sits right on top just like that. You can see the valve stem seal sitting right on top of the valve. So when it moves up and down, that's what keeps the oil that's on top here from entering into the valve. Then we have our springs, the valve springs. Now, valve springs come in many different sizes and many different shapes. Some of them are cone shaped. You can see there's paint on this one. Sometimes the paint means that it has to go a certain way. There, there is an up and down on valves, uh, valve springs. 
This one does not. This can go any way, upside this way or this way, it doesn't matter. But some springs have to go in a certain way and they're usually tapered on the top. Uh, and, and you have to make sure you put the valve spring in properly. That spring is put under compression. Then finally we have the cap. The cap is a re retainer, valve retainer, valve spring retainer, whatever you call it, it has many names. That sits on top. The valve stem comes through there and the entire assembly is held together with these little keys. And these are the most critical part of the valve assembly because this is what holds the valve inside the spring on the retainer and puts the uh, tension or holds the valve in place so that when the valve opens that's what pulls this, the valve shut, the spring shut. Let me show you how a uh, valve goes together. I would normally start by taking the valve, inserting it in the cylinder head so that this part is the only part that would be exposed. This would, the, the stem would be exposed into the cylinder head. Now, uh, valves are made in two pieces. They're actually welded together. You have the face of the seal, uh, this the sealing part which is the valve face, and you have the stem. The stem is a hardened steel and the tip is hardened because that's the part that sees the most of the uh, abuse. You have the rings in here for the keys and then you have the shaft. This is actually welded together and then it's a spun and machined so that you have a um, smooth transition here where it goes through the valve stem or I'm sorry through the valve guide. But the assembly order is you would have this and then the, uh, the seal goes on top of the valve where it sits just like that and then the next thing is the spring the spring goes on just like that so we have our valve spring and then the retainer goes on top valve spring retainer goes on like that now if you can see this would come right out the valve would come right out of the valve spring if I didn't have something to hold it in and that's where these little keys come in now I'm going to take a very close picture of this so you can see exactly what these keys do and how they work Valve keys are one of the most frustrating part of putting a cylinder head together because they're so small. And you can see the tip of my finger and you see how small that is. When you compress the valve spring, you've got to set these in place. If you don't have the uh, technique to get those in place, these things fall all over the place. And when they fall inside uh, something or you, they drop it, it's really hard to find. But the key is tapered. Uh, you can see it has the grooves on the inside where it fits in the valve. And here it is sitting on the valve. So you can see how it sits in the groove. And, and it's tapered so that when this, uh, the uh, valve retainer, the spring retainer is put on here, and you have that hole there, that's just, the hole is also tapered. When that's put on there, and once the spring is there, that's what holds it in place. Those two, two keys in place there, that's what holds the entire valve assembly together right there. Okay, this is what it looks like when you have your valve in place. The spring is in place. And I'm going to turn it up here. I have the the schlaw in place, which is the place where the roller rocker lifts, or the RFS roller finger follower. Now, this sits on here just like that, and the cam would be sitting in here like just like this, so pretend my finger is the cam, and the cam pushes down, which when the cam pushes down, it pushes this way, pushes down, and the valve opens up. That's how the valve opens and closes with an overhead cam. You got an overhead cam here, the valve gets pushed down, opens up, and in this case it's an intake valve so it lets the fuel and air mixture into the cylinder. So that's how cylinder heads are made and how they work. Talked about the foam model, the detailed foam model that goes through the lost foam process. Uh, the molten aluminum is poured in the mold, the foam disappears and we're left behind with a casting. That gets machined with all of the features. Well, we went over the intake where the injector sits, how the air and fuel mixes before it goes in the cylinder, uh, how it comes out, spark plug sits in the middle, the in difference between intake and exhaust valves, how the valves are put together in different components, and I think that gives you a good idea of how cylinder heads work. If you have any questions, give me a call or leave a comment. I answer all the comments, uh, and I'd be glad to get back to you. I hope you learned something. Before I go, I want to share something with you. Since I've been, well, was 10 years old, I've been flying RC airplanes and helicopters, uh, flew, uh, flew uh, Formula One pylon racing, uh, stunt competitions, aerobatics, all kinds of stuff in helicopters, and I just got brand new 450X, Blade 450X collective pitch electric helicopter. This thing is awesome out of the box. At the top of your search bar on the YouTube page here, just uh, search 450X helicopter and watch what this thing is capable of. 
If you fly helicopters, you got to get one of these. This thing is awesome. It's bind and fly. Take it out of the box, charge up the battery, and you're off the ground. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage.